Chris, the sampling program identified two distinct subparallel anon anomalous gold trends on the sky zone, with one being an extension of previously identified zone. How significant is this discovery for stakeholder goal? Right at it, eh, Trace? I, um, I, I tell you what, I think I think it's very significant. Um, there's a couple things about this, uh, the, uh, uh, you know, the, the results that we've got here that 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 uh, that that we find very intriguing. One is, um, you know, both of the both of the um, strike extents that that are anomalous gold in an orthonisic rock type uh, start about two to three hundred meters to the west of the planned route for the Northern Gateway Road. So we're really close to where the road will be. This these structures, gold bearing structures. Uh, the other is that one of them is not 1.9 kilometers, one of them is 1.3 kilometers. The one further south is uh, about 1.3 kilometers and open to the south southwest, so it could get larger. Uh, but and they're two distinct target, uh, two distinct uh, anomalies. So the, the 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 combined strike length so far is above 3.2 kilometers. I was doing some work. This is an orthonized rock type, similar to most similar to. Uh, perhaps the Golden Saddle discovery, 32 kilometers to the northwest. Golden Saddle has a strike extent of 850 meters at this point, uh, 600 meters of depth, and a million ounce in um, measured and indicated categories, a million ounces of gold. So um, better recovery, slightly better recovery, slightly higher grade than coffee. So pretty compelling economics. Um, but really what we're talking about here, Tracy, is a strike extent already of, of 3,200 meters compared to, in, in that instance, 850. So what, what will matter now is, is grade, uh, but, the, but the location and the, the prospectivity of these targets is, is really as good as we could have hoped for in, in, uh, in, you know, in our program this summer. So in other words, in terms of its potential impact on future exploration and evaluations, do you want to add anything further? Uh, yeah, you know, I mean, essentially, our company's got 13 million shares outstanding. We're cash flow positive. So if we, if if Golden Saddles at a million ounces today, and we have a surface imprint, you know, some multiples of 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 that surface imprint, if it carries uh, to to the same extent with the same kinds of grades and uh, provides the same metallurgical recoveries, um, th there could be a really meaningful revaluation of the shares. Very tight capital structure for the company. Uh, which we'll be able to maintain given the cash flow that we're able to generate and the, and the high prospectivity for this uh, for this target that we've identified in the um, on the Ballarat. Yeah. So with the detection of multiple spot gold anomalies, as well as the identification of a 500 meter wide zone of anomalous copper ridge, how do how does stakeholder plan to prioritize its exploration efforts for these regions? Good question, Tracy. But, you know, uh, uh, we're, we will uh, identify the full scope of exploration uh, plans for next year, but essentially we'll be we'll be targeting this, um, the, uh, you know, completing but completing the work on. But we'll be targeting drilling on the um, on on the uh, on the gold zones, the sky zones uh, that are over three kilometers in strike length. Uh, we'll be doing follow up and uh, um, uh, surface grids on the gold anomalies further south on the property, on the east and west sides of Ballarat Creek, and. Um, very possibly drilling also on the copper anomaly, uh, an intrusive Jurassic Age, uh, very large intrusive structure with high numbers of copper um, due north of the casino deposit. So, and that's on the east side of the road. So we have, we, we, we're uncovering gold on both the, the west and east sides of the road here and also a significant copper potential on the, on the east side of the road due north of the casino deposit. And given stakeholders' central position within the white gold mining and exploration camp and your proximity to other significant projects, how does this, how do you view your competitive advantage in the region and potential collaboration or competition with other entities, such as Newmont, of course, and Western Copper, uh, et cetera? Yeah, it's a very well posed question, Tracy. There's four big companies there. Newmont, yes. Um, RTZ, Mitsubishi are both shareholders plus 20 million into Casino. Uh, and then a Nico Eagle through White Gold. So, you know, the smallest of those is a $30 billion balance sheet. 
And um, so, you know, this this area has not really been in the news since the takeout of Kamenak in 2016, but it doesn't mean that there's not a lot of uh, work going on and progress. And um, so I, I'd say our prospects, um, if we have, a, you know, are able to uncover a meaningful discovery and we, we have the, you know, the basis to begin to think about that uh, at this stage, um, you know, right beside the road, there's 17 kilometers of this road goes through our, our claims at Ballarat. And that was our objective, stay close to the road. So everything we're finding here is within three kilometers of the road. It's going to bring power, water, and all the infrastructure advantages, reduce the cost of drilling, reduce the cost of development. Um, so it's uh, it's a great jurisdiction, location, location, location. And, um, you know, the, the deposits that have been identified here are, have uh, have economic extractive characteristics. And, of course, many of us are aware of the fact that you have a side business, mineralprices.com. And you have been following since 1995 every family gold office in the world. Is that correct? Gold funds, managed gold funds, 114 managed gold funds. Yeah, $30 billion. So when do you plan on starting your world tour to talk to them about stakeholder? With this, actually next week. That's a surprise question for me. But in next week, I have two institutions because I think this has the ingredients for that. Market cap of the company is $15 million. We have a discovery like this. Uh, you know, they sold coffee for $100 per ounce. If this is 2 million ounces, that would be 200, whatever. That's $15 a share <clears throat> at 15 million shares outstanding. I know it sounds, but but I think the, the ingredients are there for major discovery in and amongst, uh, you know, in the white gold district that would uh, that would be a pretty compelling story for, for, for experienced gold investors. Uh, and of course, you heard it here first on Investor News. For more information, go to the stakeholder gold website and or mineralprices.com. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Tracy.